Tony Stewart's SRX series is dead and Jimmy Johnson landed a major sponsor for Legacy Motor Club. Starting off with one of the biggest stories probably of this entire offseason, and that is Tony Stewart's superstar racing experience, the SRX series as it's more commonly known, is now dead. It ceased to exist. If you watch Pineapple Express and you remember them sitting in the car when the battery died, it is no longer going to take place in 2024, despite the series already selling tickets at various racetracks around the country. They had announced five of their stops. I'm still waiting on a sixth announcement, which will never come now. Paul Tracy really did kill this entire series, didn't he? All of that damage that PT caused has put them out of business, which isn't necessarily true. In their statement, they said that market conditions are the reason why they're suspending operations. So there's still some hope there, right? SRX is a weird property, especially in the motorsport landscape. It was a series that ran a generic car. There's no manufacturer tied to it. And they ran on dirt. They ran on asphalt oval tracks uh, for six weeks during the summer here in the United States. And it just, it caught on quick. First season for SRX, I felt like everybody's talking about it. Second season, people were still, you know, intrigued by it. And by the third season, it felt like a lot of people just weren't paying that much attention to it anymore. You bring in a bunch of current Cup Series drivers, and it turns out they're really good at what they do. And you have Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch going out there winning races on short tracks, and you're like, well, yeah, I think that's what we expected them to do. They're the best in the world at that discipline. What SRX started out to be was a series to bring everybody together from different disciplines of motorsport. It was supposed to be the new IROC series, and it's fitting that IROC announces a comeback the same week that SRX announces that they're going away. I truly don't think the two are one and the same, and I don't think that IROC coming back affected SRX now going and suspending operations. I won't call it going out of business just yet, but it is certainly on the most life support you could possibly give it at this point. But I do think that SRX maybe lost their way a bit. It was supposed to be a place where they were going to bring what seemingly felt like the retired guys with a couple ringers coming in here and there. And they would bring a local ringer in from each track. That went away in season two. And then by season three, that was not even thought about anymore. And I thought that was one of the best aspects of SRX, especially when they went to Slinger. And Luke, fin Luke Finhouse, rather, finished second in that race. And then that ends up kind of kickstarting his entire career so far. And it happened with Ernie Francis Jr. as well. They brought him in. He wasn't a local hero by any means, but that certainly helped kickstart his uh, motorsport career as well. Granted, he was a Trans Am, multiple time Trans Am champion, but it brought him to the forefront of a lot of motorsport fans' minds. And then in season two, they started to introduce a few more drivers that weren't, you know, that were more current, I should say that. And then by season three, they were just actively recruiting Cup Series drivers, Brad Keselowski, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, to come in. And it really felt like it took some of that allure away from SRX, that it had kind of lost its way a little bit, which is a bummer because, again, it was supposed to be a fun series. It was fun up until Paul Tracy's constantly wrecking everybody. And you're like, how many times can we continue to watch this? Like Family Guy just kind of beating the same joke into the ground episode after episode, and you're like, it's not funny. And it's like not fun anymore to watch. And that's sort of what it felt like with Paul Tracy. And of course, SRX did have some fun moments, right? We got to see uh, the Blaney's race against one another. Chase Elliott went to the fairgrounds and packed that place out, which was cool to see. Slinger, it took mainstream motorsport networks to local short tracks, which was awesome. It was very cool to see Stafford packed out. Very cool to see Berlin packed. Slinger packed. To me, it always felt like SRX was built to be bought eventually by a media company. Think of like how Liberty Media bought uh, Formula One. I always thought that that was kind of Tony Stewart and his investors' long-term plan was to eventually get bought by somebody, build this up, get bought. Think of Rob Deerdeck with Street League, if you've ever watched skateboarding. Again, sell it to an investment company, sell it to a media company after you've gotten it off the ground. And I just don't think those calls ever necessarily came. There was talk at the end of 2023 about potentially taking on an investment with the Saudis or doing a race over there in the Middle East. And obviously that never came to fruition. Those rumors and plan really feel like it fizzled out very quickly. But for SRX, it's a bummer to see it go, but also I'm not 100% sure that many people are going to miss it. When it moved to ESPN this past season in 2023 and it went to Thursday Night Thunder, it was cool to see the Thursday Night Thunder moniker come back. 
but it didn't really feel like it had the same excitement as it did when it ran on those Saturday nights. And I know why they ran it on Thursday, to try to get better ratings, because Saturday night is a bit of a black hole when it comes to ratings if you're not college football. Regardless, SRX did give us a bunch of moments. It was fun. It just feels like this was, of course, the next part of Tony Stewart's motorsport port. The next part of Tony Stewart's motorsports portfolio that was going to get sold off. And part of me has to wonder, too, if the regulars of SRX getting more busy, they have busier schedules in 2024, played a factor in it, right? Tony Stewart's running a full time NHRA schedule this season. Likely is going to conflict with those six weeks that he was going to run in the summer. Marco Andretti, rumored to be running potentially a full time truck series schedule this year, probably is going to conflict with it at some point. Elio Castro Neves is more than likely going to be very busy running an IndyCar team now. It just feels like a lot of the regulars weren't going to be there. And I feel like if Tony was not going to be there, he's one of the biggest draws to it. So maybe suspending it was the right thing to do. But at the end of the day, SRX looks like it has turned its last laps. It was very weird that their social accounts were posting all the way up until this afternoon about, you know, wanting to run three wide and four wide and then an hour later they're like hey guess what we're suspending operations okay six weeks was just also not long enough honestly to really boost a motorsport series and especially in a really crowded landscape that we already have so bummer to see it go not a shock and it just felt like it was the next part of tony stewart's motorsports portfolio that was going to get sold off so We'll see what happens. He got rid of the All-Star Circuit of Champions. SRX is now suspended. Is Eldora next? I don't think so. But, you know, I feel like everything might be on the table now. Switching gears real quick, and I hate myself for using that transition. We have a big-time NASCAR announcement on Thursday. Legacy Motor Club landed a major sponsor. Dollar Tree and Family Dollar. They're one and the same. They will be joining Legacy Motor Club for 38 races as the primary sponsor in 2024. That is the entire season. Jimmy Johnson loves himself a full season sponsor. Lowe's, Ally, and now he's landed Family Dollar and Dollar Tree. They're going to split their primaries across all three of their cars. Eric Jones, John Hunter Nemechek, and Jimmy Johnson will all carry primaries for Dollar Tree or Family Dollar in 2024, which is massive. They essentially landed a full-time primary sponsor for one car, and they're just splitting up over the three cars over the course of a season, which is huge. Obviously, we don't know the terms of this deal, how long it's for, what the payment is, likely probably around that $15 million a year range, maybe more, uh, kind of based off of what we know about some other sponsors out there. But this is huge. It's good for NASCAR. It's good for the fans. It's not a B2B sponsorship. We love B2B sponsorships. They put race cars on track. But most fans aren't going out and buying a Freightliner semi or a Cincinnati Incorporated CNC machine or a Haas CNC machine. But every fan can go find a Family Dollar or a Dollar Tree and spend their dollars there if they want to to support the people that are supporting things that you like, this being NASCAR. So it's very cool to see consumer brand come into NASCAR and a new one at that. Also, shout out to their CEO, who is the former CEO of Dollar General. This man just loves himself a dollar store. And he used to be the CEO at Dollar General when they were the sponsor at Joe Gibbs Racing. So this guy loves racing as well. We need more CEOs like that. But at the end of the day, it's great for everybody involved, right? Dollar Tree, they get an up and coming team, a tier one Toyota team now. They get Eric Jones and John Hunter Nemechek, both of which are very marketable, not controversial at all, except for Eric Jones sends out a tweet every now and then, which is always hilarious. And then they also get access to Jimmy Johnson, a legend of the sport, and they get access to Richard Petty, another legend of the sport. Richard was already apparently at the Dollar Tree stacking up on, stocking up on things rather. But Jimmy said that they were going to right the ship at Legacy, that when he came in, they needed to make some changes. And they made some changes and that wasn't great at first. But they found sponsorship now, and Maury Gallagher, credit to him for sponsoring that entire team basically all of last year, he now gets to sit back and not have to write checks every week, and that has to feel pretty good. And for NASCAR, they get another major sponsor to join the sport, especially at a time where everybody talks about every other sponsor wanting to leave or leaving or cutting back. And some of it is due to just the fact that like sponsorship fatigues over time. You can only advertise the same people over and over again before those advertising dollars just don't really make sense anymore. And that's what was happening with some of them. And then we get new blood that comes in, like Dollar Tree, which is great for everybody involved. And 
great for fans too because there's dollar trees or family dollars literally everywhere in the country except for like northern nevada so shout out to elko or lovelock great places just there's no family dollars there apparently so great news overall but bummer to see srx leave great to see dollar tree and family dollar come into the sport let me know in the comments what you think about srx what you think about this sponsorship deal like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram and twitter at break hard blog